since the dawn of my channel, my comments have been flooded with, Jace, Jace, what are you doing the Matrix trilogy? Please do it, I need to know your thought. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm doing it now. Since we're getting a fourth Matrix movie, I thought I should do a little review on these movies. I know everyone and their moms have done videos on them, but uh, I kind of want my turn on it, and I need content. Now, I have a little confession. I've actually never seen the first Matrix movie in a full sitting. Yes, I know it's like a sin, especially for someone who wants to do with the movie thing growing up, but I don't know, if it was on TV as a kid, I'd watch it little bits here and there, and I've seen a lot of it out of context. I know, I'm not proud of it, but hey, I finally did it. Now basically, everyone knows like everything about this movie, so if it hasn't been spoiled for you yet somehow, go to HBO, grind it out, and then come back here, unless you don't care about spoiler stuff, because I'm going to be doing a ton of spoiler stuff in this video. As someone who has seen bits and pieces out of context and knows all the major elements of this movie, I still try to put myself as if I have never seen it before. When it comes to older movies, I think it can really elevate your experience. I even know this for movies I've seen countless times. So, do I think The Matrix still holds up today? Uh, yeah, well, not as much as you think it does, but I really enjoyed this movie. I clearly see why this movie is a cult classic. I mean, look at all the parodies that were released right after it. The freezing time spin effect, to the bullet dodge, and to the odd green tint. It was everywhere. It was Bowman. I was going to say, it even brought the leather trench coat look, but... Blade came out before this. I don't know when it started. I wasn't even thought about it during this time. Was this like a huge thing in the 90s? I don't know. But yeah, The Matrix was massive. Did you ever see that movie, The Matrix? Yeah. 99% real. And notice I didn't say trilogy. Just, just the first one. We'll get to those other two later. For the first one, I'll do a deep dive, but the other two, not so much. I don't know, I don't have a lot of hot takes on those. We'll, we'll get to them later. But for now, let's kick it off with the first movie. Well, as long as you leave a like and hit the subscribe button, of course. So, The Matrix starts off with this scene, and you, the audience, have no idea what the hell is actually going on. You see police and men in black going after a woman in a black jumpsuit, and she's doing this crap. Yeah, it's whack. I gotta say, the Wachowskis have a unique eye. There are these really cool shots where the subject far away is also in focus with the subject that's close to the frames. They use this effect really well and they don't really overdo it that much and I really like it a lot. That's one thing this movie just does well overall, it's unique for the time. Yeah, we've had amazing kung fu movies, but this movie made it really mainstream for general American audiences. The action in this is really fun too, like it's really fast paced and inhuman, really keeps you interested. So, Journey warps through a phone and we still have no idea what's going on, but boy oh boy are we interested. Now, we're introduced to everyone's favorite person, Keanu Reeves. Now, here's a little hot take on Keanu Reeves. He's not an amazing actor, but what makes him amazing is his demeanor and that he can say really shitty lines and somehow make them cool. Guns. Lots of guns. It takes a very good actor to do that. I don't know, I just can't really name another actor that can do that as good as him. Also, he's just a cool dude. Like, look at this man. You just want to be his friend. So, this is Thomas Anderson. He works at this office space on computers. Wow, so futuristic. He does programming and coding that is illegal. Jesus Christ, times have changed. Yeah, this movie's dated in that regard. He gets a good morning tick from his waifu to follow a white rabbit, and we see just the most late 90s punk people I've ever seen in my life. Anywho, he goes to his rave that is like the same one from Blade. I don't know. Were raves really like this in the 90s? Hey, licensed music I can't show. Speaking of music, let, let me get it as out of the way. The music is absolutely hilarious in this one, and mainly in the first one. Mostly in early fight scenes, we get this super techno 90s music and it's it's so bad <laughs> Anywho, he meets Trinity, they have a quick chat, and then bam, back to work, eat for the good old guy. This brings me to one of my favorite sequences from the movie, The Office Escape. It's not as bombastic at all compared to the other sequences, but it's just really cute and it's honestly kind of intense. Mr. Anderson gets to the window and he f***s out and gets arrested. Generally, didn't see it coming, and I really liked it. I'd probably do the same. Now, we get to the interrogation scene, one out of two in this movie, but this scene is super cool and shows that we actually have a really cool and competent villain in this trilogy. Hugo Weaving plays our main villain through this entire trilogy and he's actually really f***ing cool. He has this inhuman way of talking and the demeanor that clearly shows he's a program. When he seals Neo's mouth, it's actually creepy, I really dug it. And the little buggy goes in him, it's just, it's just horrifying. Bam boom, Neo wakes up and the movie kind of cranks it up just a little bit. Trinity sucks the bug out and where did you get this tech? Well, I promise you, you'll never know for the rest of your life, unless it's like in one of the video games, but I don't know, I just got here. Now we're finally introduced to another standout character, Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus. Water. Wet. No one else should really play this role, it's just the iconic, 
I love him in these movies. He has this wise and straightforward demeanor, and those little glasses, like, dude, how the f do you keep those on? Another thing with the glasses with Morpheus is the imagery. Like, look at these shots, they're just, they're just so cool. So Neo meets him, and he picks the blue pill, and the movie's over. All right, he takes the red one, and things somehow get even more f***ed up. Also, what is that mirror? Like, what if Neo really didn't touch it? Will Morpheus be like, uh, hey man, you, you gotta touch it. Trust me, dude. Like, it's gonna blow your balls off. Like, not actually, because I speak in metaphors of this whole movie. I really like it when he touches the mirror. Like, his voice becomes really distorted and electronic. <laughs> It's, it's actually a little disturbing, and it's a really cool transition to the real world, which is insane. This is when the movie kicks it up to 11. 11. So yeah, all humans are in pods, and they're all playing VR, and it's really gross. The idea of the world being overran by robots is nothing new, but the idea that they are fueled to live in a simulation, yeah, that's, that's pretty new. That's pretty sick. It blew people's minds. I think if I didn't know that going in, it for sure would have blown mine too. Blah, blah, blah. Neo starts training, which reminds me, this series has some really... Dumb lines. I know kung fu. How about I give you the finger and you give me my phone call? He's beginning to believe. Free your mind. There is no spoon. There is no spoon? Then you'll see that it is not the spoon that bends, it is only yourself. These are like quotes you see your mom share on Facebook. The movie tries to be deep and metaphorical, and it does it okay sometimes. I just think these lines are really funny. Hey, it's the guy from Mandalorian. Come on. He talks and acts just like Bill Burr. He's like the blueprint for him. He did what he had to do. I never saw your face. I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy, and delicious. Oh yeah, he's also a bad guy because he wants to be rich and be able to eat in the Matrix and live a lavish life. I completely get his motivations. The real world f***ing sucks. Give me the blue pills, man. But how is he having this conversation with Agent Smith? Like, when did he plug in for this? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't explain it to you. One thing to note is, is that when Morpheus is just explaining everything to Neo, it doesn't feel like exposition. I don't know how they did it, because I see movies these days just shout exposition to the audience, but it doesn't feel like in this movie. Also, Keanu is just befuddled this whole movie, and like, you would be too, it completely works. My man does a cool dojo fight, and now they go see the Oracle, which leads me to something I just don't like in movies and media, is an Oracle character. The Oracle character just annoys me. The one that knows all and must not say anything because it might or might not happen. I like it in Endgame because Doctor Strange sees like 14 million different like outcomes and that's the one where he doesn't tell him. I don't know, I I'll give it a pass on that one, but oh, and the worst shit is in the third one. She's like, my judgment's clouded and even I don't know what about this. I don't know, that just doesn't work for me in movies. I think Oracle characters are really annoying. I really like this actress and her performance. She's just making cookies and fostering some program kids. All right, it doesn't seem so useful to me though, but okay, you do you. I do like she tells people what they need to hear, but to a degree though, because she f***ing pick and chooses for certain people. I don't know, she's all knowing, whatever, I didn't read the characters. So, Bilbo rats out the good guys and gets everyone killed but the main characters. No! But in the real world, he takes his sweet ass time killing them. I mean, like, if I was in his shoes, I'd do an evil monologue too, but let's beat it up, dog. You never know what these people. Now we get a scene that makes me love Agent Smith even more. He's just on humans which are walking bags of meat and we have an awful stench to him and we know nothing of our lives. There's a channel called Ben from Canada and he does a great video on the scene and this character specifically. You should definitely check him out along with Mr. Sending Movies and the Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Just fantastic movie channels. So the cast of Blade Trinity shows up to one of the most iconic scenes from the movie. The lobby fight. I gotta say, it's, it's pretty cool. Especially this. But man, too much slow motion is a bit of a pet peeve of mine, and this scene specifically just has just a little bit too much of it. Like the whole movie does, but this scene specifically. That's that's a lot of slow motion. I I don't not like this scene. It's just a bit too much slow motion for me personally, so I hope that doesn't I hope that doesn't razzle anyone. They get Morpheus bing bing boom, now here's the most iconic thing from this movie. Yeah, it's cool. There's honestly not much for me to say. I don't have a hot take. It's just cool. My monkey brain really enjoys this. Also, it inspired this work of cinema. Four of and Trinity leave, and now, in my opinion, we get the most amazing part of this movie. 
the subway fight. I mean, I don't even have to explain anything. I can just have this entire clip play and you'll know exactly what I mean. Just look at the martial arts. It's just choreographed so well. There's actual good tension. Like this movie, you can feel the punches. You don't get that sense in the next two, I feel. This is also part of the movie where the music isn't like dumb late 90s techno. If it was late 90s techno, this scene would have been ruined. Hey, I think I've seen this before. Neo escapes, but wait, you think the subway fight is just that? No, you an idiot turns into a chase sequence. And also, squids are breaking into the ship in the real world. The stakes are high, and I think you really feel them in this scene. Neo gets close to the phone, and then my boy gets riddled with bullets. Which, honestly, I'm glad the villain just didn't do one shot. Just makes perfect sense to make sure he's dead. Uh, we get this really awkward-ass talk from Trinity. Because I love you, you hear me? No, are you stupid? He's f***ing dead. And then this happens, and Neo's alive again? Is it because he's the one? I don't know. I honestly don't care because his return is a genuine and good exciting moment in this entire trilogy. Do you want to know why? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's the music. It elevates this scene so much. Like he stops the bullets, he's effortlessly blocking Agent Smith, and he sees the code! It's just so dang cool, dude. I can't contain my excitement for this. It really makes me sad that the trilogy never gets another moment as good as this. The second one comes pretty close, not gonna lie, but just listen to this scene. He blows up Agent Smith, which by the way, thank god they don't Darth Maul him. Like, he stays as an actual threat to this entire trilogy, which makes me really happy. I love his character. It's just a good way to cap off this movie. I think it's so cool. And then right in the nick of time, they EMP all the squids, and then Neo fly past the screen, and the movie's over. Yeah, I like this movie. It's just solid. The Wachowskis really brought a unique style that would actually change movies for the future. Like, now you consider movies to be pre-Matrix or post-Matrix, judging on its look and its fight choreography. I'm gonna give this movie an 8 out of 10. I just had a blast watching this movie. Even though I knew everything going in, I still just really enjoy this movie. I think it's just a real fun ride. I hope the other two are just as good.